Her topic is catering to the millennials. Um, Dubizel have uh, <coughs> commissioned a survey where they're talking to basically the age bracket from around about 1980 onwards. And she's going to talk to us about that. Um, this lady needs very little introduction in the Dubai marketplace. The product and marketing manager for property and jobs uh, for Dubizel, Miss Anne Boothello. Thank you very much. Wow, walking up those steps was a little bit intimidating, I must say. Every woman's nightmare, just in case you fall off the side. Um, thank you all for being here. I'm Anne Bethello. I'm humbled yet again to be at Cityscape as a speaker. I was here last year at Cityscape Global 2015. I can see a lot of familiar faces in the crowd, which obviously makes this a lot easier for me because I can relate with the audience. But at the same time, what it tells me is that each of you who were here, who was here last year and who's here this year, survived. <laughs> and you, you've been resilient and you're back again. I'm sure you've had a lot of challenges through the year. And I'm sure through those challenges, you found opportunities. And this is something that we would love to hear about. We'd love to hear about your stories over the next few days at Cityscape. Do share them with Dubizel and do visit our stand so we get to know what your opportunities and challenges were. Now, without further ado, I've got this clock that's ticking in my head telling me that I've just got 20 minutes to get through an entire research study and share with you the key findings. So I'm going to listen to that clock and we're going to start this presentation by talking a little bit about why I've titled the first slide of this deck, We the People. Now, it's a very common phrase. I'm sure you've heard this phrase used time and again in many, many political speeches. I promise you I'm not getting into politics. I'm one person who steers away from politics. But the reason why I use this phrase, We the People is the introductory statement to the preamble of the Constitution of India and the United States. What the preamble does is it defines the document, which is the Constitution, and it defines the hopes and dreams of people, the majority of the people. So what I'm going to do in this talk is we're going to talk about who are the people of the UAE? Who's the majority? Who are the people who are going to be changed, who's actually going to be changing this and moving and evolving the country and taking it forward? Are we really looking at the right target audience? When you look at the real estate model, we look at those key wealthy investors who have big portfolios, but do we look at the people who are really filling up the UAE property segment? Let's take a look. So I'm going to get into this and take you through what we're going to be talking about. Firstly, who are the people? Who is this large segment that, we're, that we have to learn about and know and understand? We're going to talk about their intent for global property pur purchasing and local property purchasing. We're going to look at where they're looking. This is the most important thing. Where, what kind of property types are they looking for and in which communities? and what aids their decision-making process. So when you're thinking of buying a property, what are the phases you go through before you actually firm up a decision? And finally, my most favorite section of this entire deck, which is the awareness and sentiment of new home search mechanisms, as well as new home concepts. New home concepts are evolving all over the world. I'll get into that towards the end of the talk. So I'm going to open up by asking you, what do you think is the median age of people living here in the UAE? Yes, we're all on the same page. Between 30 to 35. And what does that mean? When you look at that segment, they're actually defined as Generation Y or Millennials. Yep, it's a young market. They're here, they're here to create a life, they're here to start their own businesses, they're here to find a new way of living that's tax-free. 
The median age is 30 to 34, and we're going to get into that. So I took a look at the breakdown. This is a site called worldometer.info. It's a free site that aggregates data from different portals, um, the United Nations, Department of Economics, and it gives you an average of the age of a population over a certain number of years. So if we look at the UAE currently at 2016, it's at 33.5. So I checked the Dubai Statistics Center as well. And what we found is, yes, the median age sits between 30 to 34. We go back to Worldometer just to get a little bit of a forecast. What it says is that over time, this median age might increase. So today, we're looking at people within the age segment of 30 to 35. But probably in 10 years, we'll be looking at an age segment of 43. Who knows? And what does that mean? That could possibly mean that the UAE is becoming more of a sticky environment. When I say sticky, I'm not talking about humidity here. I'm talking about the fact that, the, that Dubai has actually evolved. It's evolved into a place where people can find themselves living a little bit longer. I grew up in the UAE. I've been here a long time, and I've seen it evolve. And it's fascinating to me how far it's come over the course of my lifetime. So I'm going to share with you this picture. Can anyone tell me what this is? Yes, did you go see it? <laughs> I want to review, because I'm going to go watch it, hopefully. Um, this, took, this is The Barber of Seville. It's a play that was at Dubai Oprah, and Dubai Oprah opened last week on Wednesday. All right, this is not just something you know, that's, that's going to drive the entertainment sector. It has a huge impact socially and economically on the entire economy of the country. It affects the aviation industry, it affects the hospitality industry, the tourism industry, it creates jobs. It's a ripple effect. But at the same time, it also creates stickiness. What do I mean by that? I was in Russia on a short break, three to four days, and I, was, I wanted to go see a ballet, Giselle. I love the ballet, and I did not have enough time to take my parents or to go see it. I came back realized that the Dubai Opera was opening, went online, and found that they have tickets for Giselle next week. I mean, I don't need to be in Russia, right? I could watch it here. So things like that make me feel like this whole industry, this whole movement is actually changing the way people see Dubai. And me, yes, I fall in the millennial segment. I love it. Three people within my friend circle has actually bought a property in the last year. I'm considering early next year. So what does this mean? It's really important we understand the evolving behavior of millennials. Do potential buyers lie within this segment? Are they really looking? Do we really understand their home buying perceptions? So, this presentation is really about knowing your future buyer, knowing the investor. So what percentage of millennials are looking to buy? So we actually dug out some divisal data. We tried to look at people who are actually looking for properties to buy on the desktop site. So someone who goes to their laptop and goes to divisal.com and starts looking for property. And then we looked at people looking on the iOS app. And we tried to figure out what age segment they lie, at least the majority of them. What we found out is that 55% of buyers on Dubizel are actually within the millennial segment. Yeah? So these are people who are actively searching for properties and homes now, which was, which was eye-opening. I mean, yes, we know it's a young market, but when you really look at the nitty-gritties, you start to understand that this segment needs to be taken a lot more seriously. Yes, you have your wealthy investors and the business tycoons and the guys who have the big real estate portfolios, but we're talking about an evolving country. We're talking about an evolving people, people who've been here, young people who keep coming back and decide to stay and live on. So we need to be aware of this. So let's get down to profiling. We dug a little deeper. 
We ran a third-party research study where we commissioned an external agency to pretty much find out what this segment felt and thought about when they were buying homes, and what they felt about home search methods, what do they use when they're searching uh, for property to buy. And we also took a look at their perception of home concepts. So the criteria that we used was obviously they had to lie within the age segment, so that's 33 years of age. They had to be middle management up, on, up uh, until business owners, really, so startups. 21,000 as a monthly salary, plus, plus, plus. So if they own their own business, obviously, it's way past the 35 mark. And what do you think one of the most common traits of this segment was? Any guesses? Come on, you guys know this. You've got this. Millennials, what do we love to do? Now, Ahmed got up here just before me, and he did exactly that. <laughs> there you go. So we have selfie fanatics all over the place. No, we didn't actually ask this question. 70% um, stress out easy? No, th this wasn't part of the survey, I promise you. Um, but yes, it's true, we're, we're, uh, we like our selfies. Ahmed got that one, I'll probably take it off him. <laughs> so for those who want to buy in the UAE, why do they buy? 28% of people who want to buy in the UAE would rather buy here than their home country because they find it a safer option. Okay, we all know what happened in the past decade with the Arab Spring and neighboring countries that were affected by political situations. The UAE had a knock-on effect, obviously, in terms of the real estate segment. We know this because we look at the H1 report for DLD, and we can still see the Arab expats contribute a huge chunk to the real estate segment. We're talking about $7 billion in worth of transactions in H1 according to DLD. And this comprises of Jordanians, Lebanese, as well as Egyptians, yeah? So these were the three biggest segments. All three countries were affected by the Arab Spring, so they had their the political situation in turmoil, or indirectly affected. And you have the youth coming here and wanting to invest their money. Now, we looked at the sample that we were researching, and we asked them, you know, what, it, what the reasons were. Now, 54% of our samples said that their hometowns or their home countries did not feel like a safe place to live. And 41% of that sample who did say that were Arab expats. So this, this reinstates exactly what I said, that the Arab Spring has had a knock-on effect on the real estate segment, and it still does. 26% love the lifestyle and don't want to go back to their home country. Now, what happened on the 23rd of June, 2016? There we go. Everyday coffee table discussion. Brexit, yeah? There's been a lot of talk about what impact it's had on the property sector here in the UAE. Now, we're talking about first-time buyers who are coming to the UAE to set up their life and pretty much have a good job, build their careers. When asked this question, you know, we, we obviously looked at the sample of Western people, and when asked this question, we found that British first-time buyers here in the UAE actually favored buying a property here in the UAE than back home. Sure, you get more pounds to the dollar, but when you're a first-time buyer, you've got to make a choice. So we went back to look at the DLD reports, and the first the H1 report did say that the British citizens, while well, they contributed to about four, four billion, Worth of transactions, this is right after Indians, yeah? So we, I'm, I'm from India, yes, we, we take the, the biggest chunk here in the UAE. But, but British citizens fall right after. And really, it was quite surprising that this finding came out, and that's why I've put it in here, is because there's different types of target segments. You have people who already have properties back home or properties here that they'd want to sell them, and probably send the money back home. But then you have people who've just come here, and they're young, and they're just setting up, and they're starting their careers, and they're trying to make a choice. They're earning in UAE dirhams and not in British pounds, and they're a first-time buyer. 
So the question really is, should I send my money back home, or should I make this a home? Now, 20% said that when they retire, they'd like to live in Sunny Dubai. Even if they don't live here full time, they use the property as a second home. Those who didn't want to buy in the UAE, on the other hand, 47% said they don't know how long that they were going to actually stay here. 34% said they're planning on buying a home in their home country. And this was mainly Asian expats, so we're talking about the Indian segment. So even though Indians are the biggest segment within the, the UAE market to invest, first-time buyers, if they don't have a property back home, would consider buying a property back home before investing in a property in the UAE. Now, this was a very interesting finding. 25% of our sample actually said that they would much rather invest in startups before they invest in a property. Now, this is a very hopeful scenario. What do I mean by hopeful? Even though there's so much political turmoil around the world and the media is always pumped with negative news, there's, there's this hope to create new businesses that actually are cause-driven. So you have the millennial segment setting up constantly, setting up businesses around the world to actually drive and mobilize good causes. And I'm not talking about charity organizations. I'm talking about actually doing things that change the way technology works or on the forefront of ho a smart home search, for that matter. Now, when we look at property types, I think this is the interesting thing for you. Where are millennials actually looking? Like, what, are, what are the communities, do you think, that people who fall within this age bracket of 30 to 39, some of us borderline over here, where do you think they're looking in Dubai? Do you think they're looking for one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms? Okay, I'll give you some detailed insights. So these were the five main communities or sections, areas in Dubai that actually came out uh, in regard to our study. So one and two bedroom apartments in Dubai Marina was the first. Second on the list was one bedroom apartments in Jumeirah Village Circle, and this goes back to the topic of affordable housing and how affordable housing is obviously on the radar. It's in the spotlight. What affordable housing is, is having bigger spaces for less. And communities now, more inland communities like JVC and Al Furjan are taking the spotlight. So one bedrooms in JVC. Then Dubai land was another one. Dubai land, we had two bedrooms in Dubai land. And when we talk about Dubai land, we're talking about sports city, we're talking about motor city, talking about that entire space. The third on the list were one bedrooms in Jumeirah Lake Towers. And I was surprised this community popped up, but it did. So two and four bedrooms on the Palm, four bedroom villas on the Palm, were the two properties that popped up. Of course, they were the last on the list, but nonetheless, even luxury housing within this segment, I'm guessing for the higher profile, or people who are earning more a month, is something that's being looked at. Now, is this segment really looking to buy, or are they just browsing the site, and you know, are they not hot leads, as we call them? So we asked them when it is you want to buy. And 44, and let me remind you, these, this research study was a face-to-face -face research study. It was not a survey that was sent out with a, you know, with a goodie bag or win an iPad or what have you. It was an actual face-to-face -face research study. So we sat down and really got to understand the people. 44% said yes to wanting to buy in the UAE within the next three years. The average time span for buying was actually one and a half year. 59% said yes to wanting to buy outside the UAE within the next three years. Now, these two answers can overlap, meaning people who said they wanted to buy in the UAE may also want to buy outside the UAE. So we're talking about people who are considering dishing out a good amount of cash on securing an asset, either here, globally, or both. So it's not too far away. Three years is not too far away, right? So time to better nurture our leads. I think it's now, not later. 
So what are the most important influencers to the decision-making process? So what do people take into account when they're trying to figure out whether a property is good for them, whether a community is good for them, what are they looking for? 32% actually do independent research. So this segment, people really want to figure out for themselves whether something is going to work out or not. They don't want to be inf influenced by someone else. They want to form a concrete decision by themselves from all the information that they find online, be it your websites as real estate brokers or our website as property portals or what have you. 32% say independent research is the most important factor, followed by family and friends' advice. So after they form a decision, they validate it by trying to talk to their partner or their friends and see if it makes sense to them. Third on the list was info on websites and apps, which ties in with the first. So research. All of this is important to making the decision, but it starts with independent research, which means you sit alone at home or on the go on your app, and you look for information, you store it, you form your decision, and then you try and figure out if it's the right one for you or not. But what was the most common factor? What do you think is the most common factor when, you're, when you want to buy a property? Yeah, budget for sure. <laughs> no, but I mean when you're trying to make a decision of whether to buy or not, who are you going to go to? Well, the most common factor, 56% said they would conclude with agent's advice. Yeah? What does this mean, conclude with agent's advice? It means that they've already preconceived a perception towards what they want, and then they call an agency, they already know. <laughs> they're going to milk you for answers, and they're going to try and figure out, obviously, as a buyer, they're more well-informed buyers. They do their homework. They call agents once they need validation and to complete the process. So what I'm trying to say, and the important takeaway from this is that the information we put out there on our sites, whether you're a developer or a construction firm or a real estate broker or what have you, whatever information you put out there should be accurate, concise, and should be selling your project or property in the best way possible because people read up, especially the segment. So keep it clean, and that goes for us too as Dubizzle. We're trying to take measures to make sure that the content on our site is good quality. There are things we're doing right, and there's things that we could be doing a lot better, and we're learning along the way. So information that's found online is extremely important to concluding a decision. So we need to provide the right information. Now I'm going to get into the fun stuff. Is there an appetite for new home search methods here in the UAE? UAE? Anyone know what I mean by new home search methods? Any ideas? Sorry? That's, that, that helps with the decision making, yes. Uh, but in terms of new home search methods, I'm going to take you through what I'm referring to. And it's really interesting and engaging. So let's backtrack a little bit to History 101, OK? Everyone knows what Moore's Law is. I'm not going to look this chart. I'm not going to take you through it. It's just there so that it makes me look smart, yeah? But, but what Moore's Law is about is Gordon Mo Moore was the founder of Intel, the co-founder of Intel. He said in 1965 that the number of transistors per integrated circuit would double every two years. What does that mean? It means that technology would grow exponentially over time. And did it? Yes. <laughs> Technology grew exponentially. So we're, we're going all the way back to the printing press, and then when the light bulb was invented, and then cars were invented, and then planes, and then Facebook and Twitter, and the Google driverless car. So technology has grown exponentially. I'm sure you remember this, yeah? Yeah, I've got a box of this under my bed, these cassettes that pretty much changed into this. So we, we used the Walkman, then we used the Discman, then we got the iPod. And you know how long this took to evolve? It took two decades. 
two decades to convert into an iPod, and things are growing at a much faster pace. So what did we do? We, we took a look at the fact that, hello, technology is changing at such a fast pace. Home search is changing at such a fast pace. But what are the trends out there globally? What's happening? What are users, what do they need to really make a decision and make it really efficiently? We also noticed, this, this is a very common chart. It talks about the innovation life cycle, yeah? You always have the innovators, and then you have the laggards. You have the guys who wait in queue outside the Apple store for the new product, and you have the guys who then come eight months down the line saying, have you reviewed it? Is it any good? Should I spend my money? So what we're doing as Dubizzle, we wanted to test new home search methods. So this is what we did. Very recently, what we did is that we introduced, well, we introduced a test on our site. We took 15 properties, and we created 360 virtual tours for them. 360 virtual tours are the new thing. It's a new buzzword. Everyone's talking about it. And these tours actually delivered 155% more click-throughs and 56% more leads because people, when they were on our site, got so engaged by looking at this kind of content. So we asked our, our, our respondents to the survey, would they use a site that has 360 virtual tours? Would it make any difference? And 36% actually said that they'd rather use a site that has 360 virtual tours. The other ones didn't really have any exposure to make a uniformed or a concrete decision on that question. So it goes to say that people are thirsty for this kind of content, something new, something different, that will help them pretty much streamline the process of buying a home. It helps them shortlist properties and not waste time in viewings. So awareness of new home concepts. I have four minutes, I've been warned. <laughs> what do you think this is? Everyone know what this is, right? Yep, that's it. It's a 3D printed house. And we wanted to see if people were really aware in the UAE market about 3D printed offices. So we asked this question on social. We didn't promote it. We didn't spend any money on it. What we got was 1,767 1, answers to this question. We just said, do you know what this is? People wanted to respond just because they wanted to, to tell people, to tell Dubizzle that they know the answer. And we got 90% of the answers correct. So people are aware. They're reading the news. They understand new technology. And it's really interesting to know that people are actually aware of this. So we looked into this a little bit more. It was 50% cut in cost to create a 3D printed home. It took 10 electricians and 17 days to create this office space. And it's an office space that's just sitting there. So what we wanted to know is, are homes being built? 3D printed homes anywhere in the world being built? Does anyone know? Yep, that's right. There's a developer in China. Would you live in a 3D printed home? OK, what if I said it looked like this? Would you live in it? I would. <laughs> All right, so to tell you a little bit about this, does anyone know the architect that built Yas Marina Circuit and Emirates Palace? They're an architectural firm called, well, it's an abbreviation, W-A-T-G, Wimberley, Allison, Tong, and Gu. And they entered a competition by a firm that commissioned this competition called Branch Technology. And what Branch Technology does is they're building 3D printed homes at literally half the cost of normal homes. And when W-A-T-G, which is the architectural firm, won this, they said they're going to commission them to build it. So in 2017, we're actually going to see that beautiful piece of architecture, which is a free-form 3D printed house, the first of its kind ever to be built. And it's literally going to be at half the price of normal homes. Now, that's, that's mind-blowing to me. And I hope, I hope I get to talk about this at, next, at the next Cityscape, when we're going to see a lot more volume of 3D printed homes being built around the world. So we asked our survey respondents how they felt about it, and the score was really neutral. So 
So in a nutshell, there's three main takeaways. You're dealing with people at the end of the day, right? We know the millennial segment may not be the wealthiest segment. They're starting up their lives. But remember that a renter today could be a buyer tomorrow. And that's the most important thing. When you understand the majority, when you understand the majority, you can focus on the niche. Information found online is extremely important. It's our job and it's everyone's job in this room to make sure that whatever information you put out there on your developments, on your properties, whether you're using advertising portals or what have you, you make sure it's right because people are creating their decisions before they actually pick up the phone to call you as an agent. Your job's going to be a lot easier if you have the right information out there. And third is evolution of online home search and new concept homes has begun. Let's be aware of that. I like to close my talk just by leaving you with one thought. There's a fine line between realism and optimism. A very fine line. And I'm, I've, I've been told by a lot of people that I'm overly optimistic, and that can be a little bit misleading. But there, it's given birth to something called intelligent optimism. What is intelligent optimism? Do your homework. Research your target audience. It's all about knowing who you're talking to. It's about knowing the people that you're communicating with. They are individuals. They are not your clients. They are individuals, and they are your partners. Know them, and whatever decisions you take in your business or your personal life, do it with a little bit of optimism. Thank you.